Hi there, I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com and this is my smart American accent training. Welcome to our Friday question and answer class where we take your questions regarding American accent, American English pronunciation and intonation, anything to help you improve your personal and professional communication in American English. Many of you have been attending our word of the day classes where we've been talking about pronunciation of specific words. And I've had so many wonderful requests for those classes. Thank you for all of you who have suggested a word for me to cover in word of the day. I have a long list and I'm continuing to work my way through all of your requests and suggestions. If you're in a rush, ask me today and we can talk about your word. We can also talk about other topics in American accent and American English pronunciation today. Anything goes if it's uh, relative, uh, relevant to our information. And I, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate your suggestions because they help not only you, but other viewers as well. Many people have challenges with words because of their native language, because of sounds and patterns that are difficult in English. And so um, you're probably not alone if you have a word that you struggle with, it's gonna help other people as well. Today at the start of class, I want to talk a little bit about um, some suggestions. We've been talking recently about words and contractions, um, so ways that Americans speak to keep their speech fluent. Many of you um, have excellent English skills, excellent language skills, but you might find that it's always difficult to balance out having correct pronunciation and speaking fluently, smoothly, and easily. So often my videos will be focusing on what's different between written language and spoken language. How do we get that smooth, linked, fluent speech? So one of the things that I'm gonna suggest is taking a look at using contractions. In recent weeks, we talked about using contractions for verbs like I'm, I'll, I've, how you contract with the pronoun. We also do this with question words. So for example, um, we have, uh, when we're saying who had, um, we change that to, uh, or who did, who had, who did. Um, we can change these uh, to, Food. Um, so more for did than had. Um, uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. When I'm saying who did, um, usually it would be with who did you talk to, who did they see, etc. We can reduce the who did. We actually take off the first two sounds of who did, and it becomes who'd. And what I'll hear oftentimes when people are trying to use contractions is that it's hard for them to let go of the sounds in the word. They're thinking that saying who did is more correct and more formal. And actually, contractions are formal and correct and part of professional English as well. And you can hear how it's smoother and easier, who did you talk to versus who'd you talk to, who'd you talk to. We tend to be able to connect and say it in fewer syllables and with a little more clarity. Um, what you'll see again is that when I go and link between who'd you, who'd you, sometimes the you will also get reduced and it'll sound like, yeah, who'd you talk to, who'd you talk to. And when we go from a D, D sound to a Y sound, sometimes it even sounds like who'd you talk to. You kind of get a J sound in there, who'd you talk to, who'd you talk to. That's simply because when we're connecting the D and the Y, it ends up sounding a little bit like a J. You don't have to change and try to do J, who J, um, but you might hear that and it helps you to see and understand how that how we got from who did you to who J. Um, I recommend kind of staying at this level, who do you, who do you, or who do you. And once you can say and sequence that, you wanna try to practice with adding some of your own statements. So you might say, who'd you talk to? Who'd you listen to? Who'd you like? Um, who'd you go with, etc. Things that would come up naturally, common everyday phrases is gonna help you build your fluency. Um, same thing happens if we're talking about why did, let's do he this time instead of you. Why did he, um, why did he? So I can link it and one thing that will happen is that my H will drop off. So I might say it like, 
Why did he? Why did he? Um, or if I use the, the same contraction I did with who'd, if I change to wide, then I usually keep my age wide, wide he, or I might leave it there as well. So it might be why'd he go, why'd he talk to you, or why'd he, why'd he go, why'd he talk to you? Um, and so I think that oftentimes when we're listening to American English, we hear how it's different, um, but we don't necessarily know and break down the sounds and show it to you, um, show it to people who are learning English. And so then there's a mismatch and that can be challenging. Um, many of you have had some great suggestions and pointed out some patterns that happened. Someone actually asked about this pattern last week with when did you? And I answered incorrectly because I wasn't thinking about when did you, when did you go? And we do actually link that and reduce the did part. So uh, I apologize for my mistake last week. But um, when I'm thinking about when did you in written speech, I have, I'm subject to the same thing that happens to you, which is I think, oh, I need to put all these sounds in. But really in connected fluent speech, there are many reductions and links. So thank you. Um, we have some requests. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions and give your requests at any time. So we have a request for how to pronounce uh, dare versus there, um, and also a general request about improving American accent. So I'll talk about your words first, and then I'll talk about uh, the general information about improving American accent. When we're looking at the words dare versus there, this is, a, this is a really good example of how these um, sound very similar, but the spelling is quite different. So there is a difference in pronunciation. For the word dare, we do have the d sound, and then we have the, the um, I'm gonna write it like this, we have the air diphthong. So I'm gonna start with air and add my d, air, dare. If you have trouble with air, break it down even further and say it more like air, air, um, get your tense A and then move into your air and then dare. There, even though it's spelled with E-R-E, has the same pronunciation. It also has the air diphthong. And this one has the voiced T-H sound. So for that, you need your tongue between your teeth, your voice on and the air flowing, th there. Um, so if I think about dare and there, the only main difference is that what I don't want to have happen is I don't want my th sound to get stopped. I want it to continue and for my tongue position to be correct. You might like my American accent videos for TH to help you with this pattern. It's a common error to have a D sound, more stopped sound happen rather than the voiced TH sound. Um, in terms of in general about improving American accent, what I typically suggest is start by finding out what patterns you tend to have, how your speech is different from American speech. Um, and so what I'm gonna suggest to do that is if you go to my website, speechmodification.com, you'll see that we have um, free practice material. So this is a great place to start with lessons, videos, and more. But we also on our store page have some free downloads. And why I suggest going to those free downloads is that you can um, find information based on your native language. And when you know what is different in your speech, what patterns you have that come from your native language, you're able to start correcting them. So for many people, the TH sound, like we were just talking about, is usually an error when they're speaking English or sometimes an error where it might be stopped and sound more like a D. Or if you're a Mandarin speaker or some other languages, you might have the, the tendency to make more of a S sound or Z sound uh, rather than the TH sound. So you can learn about that sound, learn what words it's in and work on correcting those patterns. When you know what's different between your speech and American English, it gives you a good basis for practicing and learning rather than trying to um, take on everything at once. And then another suggestion I have is if you go to my courses page, you'll see that I have some very inexpensive online courses. Um, a really great starting course is our six week course. And this course will walk you through 
all the steps to build the speech that you need, to build the patterns that you need, so you can understand how to change your speech step by step. Um, so it's built, it's designed to be broken down week by week, covering lots of different pronunciation and intonation patterns. And it's, as I said, inexpensive, less than $5 a month to subscribe. I also am right now offering memberships to my YouTube channel. And if you uh, get our premium membership, you can access any of our online courses for free. Um, so that's one of the perks we're offering our members right now. If you're interested, you can check that out. Um, Dana has a question. Um, good evening, everyone else who's joined and been saying hi. Um, she mentioned, Dana says that I mentioned during one of my live classes that catch, catch is sometimes pronounced catch when unstressed. Um, oh, okay. So she wants to know if there are other words besides and, than, can, and catch that tend to go to a different vowel sound. So what we're talking about is when I'm saying I can go or I can um, catch it, um, that we don't always use our a ah, cat vowel, we often will change to a reduced sound. So I can becomes I can, I can go. So I would say it's either an eh vowel or a schwa, I can, I can go. Um, catch you later. Well, that's a stressed cat. Ah. So anyway, um, I am not sure <laughs> to answer your question. Yes, for and and than, we definitely sometimes reduce that vowel. I would guess that it can happen in other unstressed words as well, but I'm going to um, wait and research that for you and get back to you with it because I don't want to give you incorrect information. Um, and I know that oftentimes the a ah and a ah difference is an error pattern for a lot of people. And um, I think when in doubt, it's probably safest to use the a ah vowel, except on helping words like can and and, where we definitely know it's reduced. Many other nouns and verbs that have the a ah sound um, are going to hold on to that ah sound. One thing that I can think of off the top of my head um, would be the word at, like um, I'll talk to you at six, at six. I'm not sure I'm saying ah, at six. Um, I'm gonna be at the library, at the library. I think it's, un I think many times in those unstressed structure words, we can also reduce that ah vowel. I'll, I'll get back to you. Thank you for your question, Dana. Um, she also, Dana would also like to know how to pronounce the words colonnade and promenade or promenade. Um, so I'm gonna have to check my dictionary. I don't really know that word colonnade or colonnade. Um, my guess is that that would be an aid. A promenade is, can be promenade or promenade. So let's look at um, the Oxford Learner's Dictionary. This is one of my favorite resources um, because it shows me alternate it shows me multiple pronunciations, English versus uh, American English versus Indian English. I mean, <laughs> uh, British English, also similar to Indian English. And I can listen to the word. Okay, so this is showing me that in British English, promenade, in American English, promenade. Um, so I guess that's probably why I know both pronunciations. And then your other word was... Um, colonnade. Um, so I'm curious about what that word means as well. Let's look. Uh, so for for that word, uh, both British and American English do colonnade. Um, it's a row of stone columns with equal spaces between them. Um, okay, so usually supporting a roof. Um, so something you would see in Greece, for example. Um, all right. Um, Sumaya Fatima would like to know how to pronounce her name in an American accent. Um, so based on how your name is spelled, I would guess that it's Sumaya. Um, the A-I-Y is not a convention that we have in spelling in American English. And then um, I would say Fatima, the convention would probably be second syllable stress, Fatima. But uh, we might, people might also say Fatima, Fatima. Um, so what you're going to run into is that when people see your name, how it's spelled in your language or how it's spelled in any language, they're going to apply the rules of pronunciation from American English to it. 
and they're going to get it wrong in most cases <laughs> because um, sometimes you might be lucky and it lines up. So what I usually recommend for names is telling people what your name is and giving them a point of reference. So for example, if it was Sumaya, um, you might say it's like Maya with a Sue in front of it. If that's incorrect, if there's another way of saying it, find a similar American word with pronunciation and tell them what it's like. Now for you, if, you, if I knew how it was correctly pronounced, I would be able to give you specific advice. But that helps people not only remember it, but get closer to pronouncing it correctly. Other people will use a strategy of pronouncing it the way Americans do and changing the pronunciation. But I feel like that, um, of course, everyone is has to make their own decision about what they would like for having their name pronounced. But I think that people can do a better job of pronouncing your name the way it should be pronounced if you give them some um, reference points or some help. So. Um, we have a question about whether it's natural to finish the dark L with a light L where the tip of the tongue touches the front teeth. Um, yes, definitely. I recommend this in a lot of cases because what will happen is I can say my dark L without lifting and closing to my teeth. For example, in words like um, feel, feel, you can hear it sounds like I'm saying an L and I didn't touch up. When I say feel with an L where my tongue touches at the end, you definitely hear that it's an L. And when it comes to words more like um, all or tall, <laughs> if I don't close off, you can hear that that doesn't actually sound very good. So when the vowel shape, like the aw, ah, is very similar to the dark L shape, all, all, if I don't finish with that light L front touch, it'll sound more like just a distorted vo vowel. It'll sound like call or tall. You can't hear that I'm making an L because the shape of the vowel is too close to the shape of the L. So when in doubt, um, even for words like feel or tell, wherever you can, you can always finish with that L. You just don't want to lift too much the tongue and have it like feel or tell. You don't want to um, have too much contact there. You need to keep that um, vowel, that uh schwa sound before your dark L. Great question. Um, Olvia would like to know about vicarious and vicariously. Um, great question, good words. So let's look at that. So vicarious has our air diphthong that we were just talking about with dare and there, and it's on the stressed syllable. So we have a short, um, the rest of the syllables are shorter, but we have secondary stress on the vi because we have a clear vowel i. So try it like i and then vi care e us. Only two syllables there. Um, so kind of interesting because three clear vowels and only one schwa. Length is here, vicarious, vicarious. And then when we have vicariously, vicariously, it's a little tougher because I, again, have to do the E, E, the tense E's, but in quick unstressed syllables. So for that, I might try doing the end sounds first. Eously, eously, cariously, vicariously. Those are great suggestions. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, Dana would like to know, when using the word lukewarm in a sentence, which syllable would I naturally, naturally stress? Let me just try a sentence. Um, I don't like lukewarm coffee. In that sentence, I stressed luke, <laughs> um, lukewarm. Uh, although lukewarm is similar, it's a compound word. And so probably I'm going to have my primary stress here but a little bit of stress on the second syllable as well. I'm not going to want it to sound like lukewarm, lukewarm. I need to be able to hear that warm clearly as well. So I would have a little bit of stress on both. Also, let's try it um, if I'm if that's the stressed word. Oh no, the coffee is lukewarm. In that case, lukewarm. I feel like I stressed a little bit more on the second syllable. <laughs> the coffee is lukewarm. The coffee is lukewarm. Lukewarm coffee. Hmm, interesting. I don't know if it changes, but what I would say is that when it's stressed itself, maybe I have a little more on warm. And when um, 
when it's modifying something else, it sounded like I stressed Luke a little bit more. You got a lot of tough questions for me today, Dana. I'm going to have to look that one up as well. The compound noun question is something I'll be talking about. Tomorrow's um, word of the day is a funny one. It's hedgehog. It was requested by someone. And I used it as an opportunity to talk about stress in compound nouns because this is an error pattern that happens for lots and lots of people because it's a little different and it doesn't follow the same rules as um, normal sentence stress for nouns and verbs and adjectives. So um, tomorrow in the word of day class, we'll be talking about hedgehog. And then I have a special members only class talking about compound words and rules and a link to an exercise on my website talking about that. And for tomorrow only, I'm gonna make that members only class available to everyone as an opportunity for you to see what kinds of content the members are being able to access. So um, I don't wanna keep talking too much about this, but um, in order to help support the channel and to bring more training and more resources to more people, I've decided to offer these memberships. And so we'll have our regular classes. So nothing's changing in our live classes or our word of the day classes or our new videos. Still gonna have great content that's free for everyone. Still gonna be taking your requests and your suggestions, directing you to free resources. It's very important for me to offer free, good, reliable training. So never fear if you don't wanna become a member, no big deal. If you do wanna become a member, Tomorrow, you can get a little preview of some of the perks that I'll be providing for members. It's just a way for me to um, broaden how much training I can offer um, and keep the prices very low for people. Um, so there'll be different levels of membership, live classes, extra videos, extra lessons. And um, for premium members, I'm also going to do some small group classes over Google Meets where we can see each other and hear each other. And I'm really excited for that because... I do offer those classes through speechmodification.com and I have really, really enjoyed my small group classes. I'm gonna be continuing to offer those, but the membership offer classes will be something that more people can access for, um, uh, for less expense, um, less commitment as well. So check that out if you're interested. When you go to Speech Modification uh, Seattle, the channel page, there's a subscribe button. Hopefully you've already used that one. And there's a join button. And when you click the join button, you can see all of the details there. And you can also um, ask me questions, send me an email or write me a comment. I'm happy to answer those. Okay, uh, enough about that. Let's go back to your questions and comments. Um, so we have um, a request to pronounce do, does, can, and would. So do, we just have the ooh vowel. It kind of sounds like this. It's the same as um, this word, do. We have does. I would rewrite that like this. That has vowel schwa and the S and the Z sound. The letter S says the Z sound, does, similar to the word was. Um, you'll see that I like to rewrite and respell the words in a way that helps you know what the sounds are better. I also use the IPA symbols, but if you don't know the symbols, you can also check out the spelling. Then we have can, that has the black cat vowel. And as we were talking about with Dana, we often will reduce it and kind of leave that vowel out. Um, so when I say I can, I use my a vowel. When I say I can go, I say it more like this, I can, I can go. And finally, would, this sounds the same as wood, as in the table is made of wood. And that has my oh vowel, my good book vowel. And so in, in general, these are all good examples of how varied American English spelling is. You might find it helpful to use my um, vowel playlist to see and understand more about these vowels, because I'm always talking about these basic, common, extremely useful and functional everyday words. If you can correct your pronunciation on those, it's going to make a big difference for your overall speech. About 80% of what we say is made up about of those 1,500 words or less, those common repeated structure words. I also just want to show you that on the website we were looking at before on speechmodification.com, another of the free downloads that I have um, besides the accent error pattern download is uh, one about vowel sounds. 
And um, you can check that out. It's part of my online courses as well. And it has um, information for you about um, all of the vowels of English, um, what words they're in, how to spell them, what the symbols are, um, and what the most common words are for them. So that is a really good reference to print out, to have. Right now it's free, so you can download that and use it to help you understand the vowels in general. Also here on YouTube, I do have a vowels playlist where I go through each of the vowel sounds, talk about what words there are, and give you advice about what common errors um, you might have on those vowel sounds based on your native language. Um, okay, we have a question. Um, uh, which is saying, I thought it would work. Um, uh, I can't get the W of wood correct after the it. Um, I end up saying B instead of W when speaking fast. It is easier when speaking slow. Um, so yes, definitely a good point that when I go slowly, typically it's easier for me to get the correct sounds, but in connected speech, I want to be able to speed up. So what I would suggest is anything that you're working on, do practice it slowly. And if you can identify which part goes wrong, you can practice just that part. So if, um, if you're pr having trouble with the it would, it would, and your, your W is not coming out, practice going from the it to the would. And what you might find is that what Americans do here is they say it, it would. They don't really do it with a pronounced T, it would, because that's a harder to combine. So they, they stop the air for the T and go right into the W, it would, it would. Um, I actually think I stopped that one not so much with my tongue in the T, T position, but the air gets stopped a little further back. Um, it would, it would. Uh, and then you can also try other combinations that are similar. That would, that would be good. That would be nice. It would help. It would work. Um, focusing in on the part that doesn't go well for you and go as slowly as you need to and then speed up. But if you have the problem on that combination of words, it'll probably happen to you on other combinations where it's the T going into the W. So narrowing your focus and practicing specifically on the challenging parts uh, is my recommendation. Um, thank you for sharing that um, information. Um, okay, um, we have a question about reading passages in American English. Um, so uh, I don't, I'm not a reading teacher. <laughs> I'm gonna say that um, for in general, if you're trying to improve your reading or your reading aloud, um, choose subjects that you're interested in, um, choose reading passages that are a little bit challenging for you, but where you know about 80% of the words and you're learning some of the new words. Um, you can find nowadays a lot of material on the internet where you can listen and read along. That's really helpful for um, reading comprehension, listening, and pronunciation. Also, I often recommend when you're working on pronunciation that if you're reading something aloud, focus in on one sound or pattern as you read and try not to worry about pronouncing absolutely everything correctly. Uh, do it word by word or practice um, focusing in on sounds and connecting. So having a, a goal or a target in mind for pronunciation when you're reading is gonna help with pronunciation. If you're working on improving your reading skills, the more you read, the better and reading at the right level for you is what I would recommend. Um, thank you so much. So um, we had a follow-up question on in, in it would, would you say the T is a glottal stop? It would, it would. Yes, I would. Um, it's, you know, that stopped T, depending on what word follows, I may make that fully with my tongue behind my teeth. And that's how I usually teach the stop T if I'm saying a word like hot or it um, so that it doesn't sound too stopped here like hot or it. I don't really wanna hear that throat sound. But when I'm saying it would, it would, I don't think I can very easily stop with my tongue. It would, it would. So I do think I stop a little further back. I don't stop so far back in my throat like it, it would. That sounds different to me, it, it would, it would. I feel like I'm stopping the air somewhere in the mouth. 
it's kind of subtle and it may not matter, but I am hoping that with those examples, you could hear the difference of too much of a glottal stop is gonna sound, um, it's not gonna have that American sound. Now there's a variety of what different American speakers use as well. So you have to get a balance for what's comfortable for you, what sounds fluent and what people perceive as the correct pronunciation. So experiment a little bit and see what works for you. Um, great questions today, everyone. Thank you so much. We'll be back again tomorrow, like I said, with our word of the day hedgehog and also our special bonus video talking about compound words and lessons for that. We'll also be back again next Friday with our live question and answer class. So thank you so much for everyone attending today. Uh, it was a wonderful class and I look forward to seeing you again next week. If you have questions and you're watching this not live, but as the replay, please feel free to leave those in the comments. And I do go back and follow up and share resources and answer your questions in the comments. Um, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound American, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.